How much time do you actually need to master oil painting? The biggest thing that I see tripping painters up is a focus on wanting to get results as quickly as possible versus trying to figure out how to map out their painting journeys to get results as efficiently as possible. And today I really want to talk about the difference between those two attitudes and the common mindset traps that I really see tripping artists up and actually getting them so discouraged so quickly that they give up rather than actually seeing their goals through all the way to the end. So if you are a painter who really wants to accomplish exciting things with your work, this is going to be a video worth listening to because a lot of us fall prey to these kinds of mindset traps. And even if you aren't falling victim to all of the things that I talk about in today's video, I'm pretty darn sure that something I talk about is really going to hit home and taking the time to think through this and assess how this is impacting your own work is only going to help you in the long term to make sure you get where you really want to go with painting. As you listen through this, if this video is helpful, even in the slightest, I hope you will give it a like and subscribe to my channel. And if you really like the way all of this is sounding, this is the kind of support and feedback I give to artists that I mentor every day. If you want that to be you as well, there is a link in the description below to find out more about my mentorships and how they work and for you to actually apply to work together with me. With that being said, let's go ahead and dive in. So I am thinking about this idea of getting results quickly versus efficiently this week because it's something that I think I have seen kind of in the back of the minds of a lot of different artists I've been talking to. And my suspicion is that this idea of getting results quickly in some way relates to the idea of talent and the gross misconceptions we have about it as painters. Okay, so what does this actually look like in practice? I think in practice, the thing that most often trips artists up is that we all tend to think about time versus any other metric. So for example, we might think, okay, I really want to commit to reaching my painting goals and I wanna think about this happening over the next year. The reality is, is that a year is a pretty arbitrary amount of time. It's informed by a lot of things, such as how much time would I need in my current career to master a new skill, given the fact that maybe I already have a four-year degree in that area? Or how long did it take me to master a skill that had nothing to do with painting? Oftentimes we go back to this idea of these things taking a certain amount of time and it's a super natural way for us to frame what we want out of our painting journeys. And I think this really does us a disservice. As human beings, we are exceptionally bad at estimating time. We are bad at estimating how much free time we will have in a given week. Ask me how I know as I look at my schedule for the week. We are also really bad judges of how long it takes to reach really big goals. A great example of this is how long it might take for you to reach certain goals in the gym or like fitness wise. There are certain things we can't just push ourselves to do because the body will tell you that it has reached a limit and that it doesn't care about what expectations you have. There are very real physical realities in play that it simply can't bend the rules for. So if we say, I want to become a full-time painter in the next six months, or if I want to have a full body of work that I am proud of in the next six months, we often think we have a lot more time than six months actually allows. This is one reason why I am a really firm advocate in terms of thinking of 90 day stretches versus year long or multi year goals. It just happens to be a lot easier to look at the next three months and go ahead and get a really clear picture of what my schedule is going to look like. 
granted, this is not perfect because even as I look out to the next work week, I often think I have a lot more time than I realize that I do, but I am certainly a great deal more accurate when I think in terms of 90 day periods versus much longer stretches of time, which is often the amount of time we're thinking of when we think about reaching our big goals artistically. The reality is that every painter I know, that I know a lot of other artists look up to, they have spent years and years to even get to the point where their work was considered professional quality, let alone the amount of time that it took them to get to the height of their ability. And even then, a lot of those painters had decades as children where they might have made art or painted like children do. So oftentimes, when we are thinking in terms of reaching our big goals in one to two years, we really have a couple of things that are doing us a disservice. The first being that we really overestimate the amount of time we have to dedicate in that time span to really reaching our goals. And the other piece being that we wildly underestimate the amount of time that it took other people to accomplish the same thing. And so if I had any advice for any painter out there who wants to reach really big goals that excite them, I would say first and foremost that this is a journey that can't be rushed. That being said, it is a journey that you can make more efficient. You can make sure that you don't waste time spinning your wheels or exploring directions that ultimately you aren't interested in or building up habits that ultimately aren't compatible with the way that you want to work. The truth is I don't have a standard amount of time that it should take anybody to reach their goals. I'm not gonna talk about the 10,000 hour rule or say that Yes, after like four years in art school, everybody should be working at a professional level. I know for my own journey, I first played with oil when I was three years old painting with my grandmother. And granted, I didn't go back to oil painting until I was probably 14, but I spent so much of my childhood drawing and building up my drawing skills. Even though I didn't really think about it that way, those repetitions mattered. I needed decades of drawing and painting like a child would. Like I said, I got back into oil when I was probably about 14. I played with this on and off until I was, let's see, how old was I? About 27. And only then at 27, it took me, I wanna say a year and a half to like really practice and get to the place where I could think about doing this full time, probably closer to three years to actually make that happen. But the takeaway from that shouldn't be, oh, I need a good two to three years to go on a similar journey to this other artist that really negates and overlooks the impact of the previous decades of experience. And granted, those previous decades of experience weren't me sitting down and painting every day. Far from it. I had entire periods of my childhood or young adulthood where I didn't make any art whatsoever. So you could probably make up for that time much more efficiently than I did. And that really brings me back to this idea that I want to talk about today. And that is that oftentimes the most efficient road to reaching your goals or to mastering your craft actually involve really giving yourself the space and room to iterate and also to explore. And I'll tell you what I mean or what I'm thinking about when I say that. I think about the artist who works on a particular painting and they want everything in that painting to click. They want the color to be dialed in. They want the drawing and the likeness to be accurate. They want the brushwork to have the exact right juiciness. They want the loose edges. They want the composition. They want everything. And I think that really comes from a couple of different places. I'm sure a big part of that for a lot of painters is perfectionism and wanting to feel impervious to critique. And I think another part of that is that, you know, if I do my best to learn and listen and internalize the lessons that other artists are here to teach me, I should be able to listen to that, apply it, and have it work. 
And the reality is that so much of painting comes down to developing an intuitive feel for what you're doing. And I'll tell you exactly what I'm talking about. I'm going to give you two examples that are related here. One is simply getting acquainted with oil painting generally, and the second is really developing looseness in your oil painting. Both of these things require quite a bit of intuition and having an innate feel for what you need to do with the paint to get the result that you want. If you are just starting out and everything you do feels slick and the paint is dripping down the page and your result looks watery and washed out, that probably means that you have too much solvent. So what do you do? Okay, you use a lot more paint and your paint layer on the canvas is super thick and everything gets muddied together. And you have this like really nice, thick, juicy result, but it's kind of not what you want. Uh, maybe the color is really far away from what you want. Maybe you lose the drawing. To find the sweet spot between those two things, what you really need is to give yourself time to explore on the spectrum of painting with paint that's too thin versus too thick or too little paint versus too much. There isn't a simple recipe an instructor can give you, or maybe there is, but what really matters is that you can mix up the amount of paint and the consistency of paint you need without thinking of it as a formula. And that comes from a sense of intuition, which comes from repetition and exploration. In other words, you have to get it wrong a lot of times before you have an intuitive sense of what to avoid and thus how to do it correctly. So oftentimes when I talk to a painter and I'm giving them feedback, my suggestion is simply, you are on the right track. I need you to go ahead and do this several more times and tell me what things you learn and let's take a look at what the evolution of your pieces looks like over the next several paintings versus really wanting to make sure that you do everything in one painting perfectly. And in making those five pieces, you might push yourself past a certain limit, which you will probably find out about because you are disappointed in the painting that you make, or a challenge feels like one that you just can't overcome in a given painting. When you come up on those moments where maybe you try a master study that uses a technique that you hate or an approach that feels overwhelming, or you try to really capture a value structure or a color composition that you just don't know how to make, that tells you a lot about where you are and what you have to focus on next to get where you want to go. And it can also tell you that maybe where you thought you wanted to go isn't exactly the direction that you want and you need to do a slight course correction. Both of those things are not only fine, they're actually incredibly important. And if you are focused on doing everything as quickly and as perfectly as possible, you really deprive yourself of those learning experiences that really solidify exactly where you want to go, what you need to focus on, and what things you might want to avoid. So if you are thinking about long-term goals, I think my best piece of advice here is to reframe your thinking away from, I want to reach this goal in X year. And instead, I would encourage you to think about your goal in terms of giving yourself the space to fully explore and really give yourself room to build up the skills you need on the timeline that actually makes the most sense. I know that doesn't help to give you a handy formula for exactly how long you should allocate, but I think this is going to put you in the right mindset to really dive into your journey. And once you actually dive in in a meaningful way, creating a structure around what the rest of your journey actually looks like should start to feel more and more intuitive. And you are actively building up the kind of process where you're being honest with yourself in terms of your expectations and you are open to the feedback of realizing, okay, I'm working slower than I anticipated in terms of being able to reach my goals. I'm going to factor this into the equation and make an adjustment. If you have experience with this. I would love to hear all about that in the comments, no matter which way it went, whether you are working full time as an artist and you want to share how much time it took you to get to that place, or whether you know how much practice one of your favorite painters needed before they were able to make a living off of their work. 
or anything in between. I would love to hear all of your experiences with this as well as your questions. And if you want my help to make sure that you are on that right track, be sure to check out the link in the description for my free masterclass to find out more about how I help other painters to reach their goals. And of course, there's also the link down there to apply to work together. All right, until next time, happy painting.